Welcome to America's Commercial Real Estate Show, your source for market intel, forecasts, and strategies. Hello, I'm Michael Bull. Thank you for being with us. This show today is brought to you by my company, Bull Realty. For custom asset and occupancy solutions, visit bullrealty.com. You're also invited to reach out to me directly. My email is an easy one. It's Michael at bullrealty.com. Well, we have a great show for you today. We have Brian Bailey here with us in Studio One. He's a commercial real estate expert with the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta. Brian, good to see you, sir. Great, thank you for having me back, Michael. Good to see you. Thank you. And before we get going here, do you, do you need any kind of disclaimer? You bet, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I live with that disclaimer. Yeah. So just so we're clear and mm-hmm. fully transparent, these are my views and not necessarily those of my colleagues at mm-hmm. the Atlanta Fed or the Board of Governors in DC. All right, well said. And I think uh, the you know this is a great show to to have right now where we are, right? We have you know, we have an economy that's kind of changing a lot. You know, we had the rapid rise in interest rates. Now it seems like even though uh, the federal rate's not reduced, we're having some rates come down with the 10-year treasury coming down, which seems to be a little helpful. Also seems kind of interesting now that the market feels like interest rates aren't rising anymore. It seems like lenders and, and buyers are trusting their underwriting more. We're starting to see a little, little bit of volume pick up. On our side, on the uh, brokerage side too, we're seeing more banks kind of all right let's go ahead and get through and let's let's sell this note or let's do a short sale or let's foreclose and kind of get through and i think it's healthy to kind of get through everything but the economy right that's the people are saying well what's what is going on we had the stock market volatility here lately and um and and things unrest around the world how is the economy going right now in your opinion and it's really in its and its impact on commercial real estate. Right, and that's a good question, thank mm-hmm. you. So I think you know overall, while we've seen mm-hmm. more volatility, we know that they're slowing. The Federal Reserve policy makers mm-hmm. have certainly talked about the slowing that they have anticipated, mm-hmm. but the economy continues to grow and grow at, at healthy rates. Mm-hmm. Uh, certainly, you know, last Friday's jobs numbers mm-hmm. at 114,000 were perceived as disappointing by the marketplace. They were below the expectations of 170,000, give or take. But you know, from that standpoint, I'm fully in the camp that as an economy, we have to create about 100,000 jobs a month to keep up with population growth. So on that front, if that's correct, we still created excess jobs just not at the rate that was anticipated. I think that the healthy economy has certainly supported commercial real estate. Mm -hmm. Commercial real estate's a capital intensive industry. Mm -hmm. From that standpoint, we know that it has, you know, been squarely impacted by this normalization of interest rates. So as a capital intensive business, industry, pardon me, we've had more headwinds Mm -hmm. from the finance perspective. While the economy has provided very good, strong support on a a growth perspective, now I see that beginning to change. Mm -hmm. As we've seen this volatility, we've seen long-term rates come down, which may very well be good news Mm -hmm. for the commercial real estate industry. If you think about one of the major disconnects was the challenge around cap rates. Yeah. What are our cap rates? We, we had transaction volume that pulled back significantly. And so there were a lot of questions and a lot of disconnects mm-hmm. between, in the conversation of cap rates, meaning that appraisers would report cap rates in an appraisal to a lending institution. And the lending institution would say, you know, in our opinion, we think that they're different. And so we're going to add 100 to 200 basis points mm-hmm. on the cap rate to come to the value we think. Mm -hmm. So there's already a disconnect between the appraisal and what the lender is thinking in underwriting. And certainly that creates headwinds and it creates greater uncertainty, which creates headwinds for transactions. So I think from that standpoint, this may be a good omen. This may be a positive uh, event for commercial real estate. In addition, we know that long-term rates coming down cuts, uh, you know, begins to cause the cost of debt to come down, yeah. decline. So on that front, I think, you know, there are some changing winds and that's going to create 
some opportunities. It may also create in the short term some challenges. Mm -hmm. If we see folks that because of the volatility and uncertainty say, gosh, I'm a little bit concerned about this situation. Maybe I'm not going to approve that lease. Mm -hmm. That may slow absorption mm -hmm. and that you know, create, may create some cash flow problems mm -hmm. uh, on, on, on that front. So we may see in the short term, you know, uh, uh, some group of foreclosures. Mm -hmm. uh, we're already seeing some of those. But I think, you know, generally speaking, economy remains healthy. Mm -hmm. Certainly this change in, in interest rates, uh, long-term rates by the market right now, it, it, I, I view as a good thing for uh, commercial real estate dynamic, dynamics. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. If when you look at commercial real estate on its own, if we could get some rate drops, it, uh, it's less painful, especially for these folks that maybe the interest rates today are double what they've been paying or what they underwrote. Um, and you mentioned uh, appraisals. You know, we've seen uh, as brokers when uh, looking at appraisals from that are ordered by banks on existing loans that sometimes they're they're really high. We had one the other day that was absolutely double what the property was worth. And and when I reviewed it, I called the bank and said, look, I don't want to cause you guys any problems, but this thing's just way off base. And so they looked at it. Fortunately, their head appraisal at the bank knew me. I speak at the Georgia appraisal conference each year and stuff. So he listened and they ordered another appraisal. And Brian, it came back extremely high too. And so they, they said, why don't you talk to the appraiser? I talked to the appraiser and asked him where he got, he said he got some of his information from the appraisal that was just done. <laughs> so he just copied the mistakes and kept going. So are appraisals, are the bank's appraisals coming down a little bit? In most cases, it seems like they need to come down or to be more realistic. What are you seeing? So we have seen, you know, we have seen some decline in value. I think it depends on, you know, significantly on the market, the property type, certainly the structural shift in office has, uh, you know, greatly impacted values. Mm -hmm. I think we're suffering with some multifamily right now. Mm -hmm. We uh, got a little bit overbuilt mm -hmm. uh, in some of the markets. And from that standpoint, there's also an affordability issue. Mm -hmm. So kind of double whammy on some of this very high end multifamily. And we're starting to see some foreclosures there. Values mm -hmm. have come down. Um, so I think it's kind of a, 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 a locational dynamic. I, I'll give you an example. This will probably blow your mind. Mm -hmm. But uh, South Florida uh, had a non-bank lender uh, who had three broker brokerage companies. So let's leave the appraisals out. We've already we've already picked on the appraisers. Let's pick on the brokers. <laughs> let's Sorry. do it. Let's Sorry, do Michael. It. But no, but we deserve that. Yeah, right. <laughs> You're gonna say I'm an equal opportunity offender <laughs> now. But I think from a you know from the brokerage mm -hmm. standpoint, you know they're engaged in the market mm -hmm. hourly, mm -hmm. so they ought to have a very good understanding. Yeah. But this non-bank lender had three different brokers go through this office building, and in in the span of three weeks, so one a week. And they came back with values that ranged from $8 million to $32 million. <laughs> I don't know how you make a, a, a decision on a range from yeah. $8 million to $32 million. That's, yeah. I mean, $32 million, I might keep it. I might try to sell it. $8 million, you know, i am probably got real problems. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I think, you know, there, there's an interesting... Uh, there's an interesting dynamic in appraisals right now. And and, and I think, you know, another, another one... Um, you know, we've 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 had you know feeling we've known uh, for some time that there's the structural shift going on in office, and you know, unfortunately, I saw the first appraisal that said, "Hey, the highest and best use is to raise the building and return <laughs> it to vacant land." Oh, no. And I, I mean, that's that's tough, you know, yeah. from a, from a regulator perspective. It's yeah. tough from the bank. The good news was the borrower, uh, you know, was a was a stand up. Uh, party and from that standpoint, they were still current on the loan. Mm -hmm. But I think you know that that's that's tough yeah. to say. Gosh, the highest and best use is is for this thing to go away. Yeah. Uh, so I, I have some fear that some of the Class C space has got a date with a bulldozer, and yeah. we're you know going to start seeing more and more of that. Uh, you know, materializing you know over the next 12, 24, maybe thirty six months. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. We had in the Great Recession. I, I didn't think it was that great, but that's what we've been calling it, right? So, I uh, I saw one of uh, appraisal on a, on a property we were looking to sell for a bank that was land for residential development, and the appraiser said it had a negative value. <laughs> like, 
negative. Wow. Like, what yeah. else? <laughs> I, I get paid to take this? What a deal. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. yeah. Um, but it's amazing how, how things can change and, and folks who uh, do contrarian investing uh, uh, over the over my lifespan in this business have, have done really well. And it's interesting to see how things can change. And on the office side, I think you're right. I think some of these buildings will get torn down and some will get converted to other uses. And and then and, and then more and more, which seems slow, but more and more companies want to want the people back in the office. And, and then you have just the normal growth in a lot of markets. So I think the office market could turn around faster than we all think right now because it looks so grim. We're taking out a 135,000 square foot class A building. And we looked at the submarket absorptions negative. So to your point, when you're trying to evaluate, it's like, well, how do you, how do you estimate how long it's going to take to rent these and what rates and, and what TI? Right. It, it, it's very, very subjective. You bet. And, and But I, I mean, you're asking kind of the question, you know, are things turning? Mm -hmm. I, you know, as I'm engaged with the industry mm -hmm. and trying to understand some of the trends, you know, essentially, are there some green shoots there? And I think we absolutely have to, yes, there are green shoots. One of the examples I'll give you, so um, in the last probably six months, I've, I've heard of three different instances. So these are coming right from the folks who are engaged in these, in these uh, transactions. Mm -hmm. uh, they're saying that, you know, XYZ opened a new office and day one, they were out of space. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, okay, we're seeing an office opening. We're also seeing that they focus too much on efficiency. They wrung out too much efficiency yeah. and they are out of space day one, which unfortunately in commercial real estate has the tendency to happen. The pendulum swings too far as we know. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, we need to be back over here a little bit. Yeah. And so I think from that standpoint, we are beginning to see some green shoots. I think you're right. You could de definitely see more people returning to the office this fall. I think there's hope in some of the up and coming generation in that we see them viewing networking, training, learning, which are not done quite quite as well remotely yeah. as they are versus in person. Yeah. Um, culture, another big one. How do you learn culture if you're yeah. trying to translate it over a display screen? Yeah. Uh, that's hard. And so I think from that standpoint, some of these younger generation folks are saying, gosh, I'm missing out on value, part of the compensation equation in my career. Mm -hmm. And so I need to be back in the office. I need to be meeting as many people as I can. Mm -hmm. I need to be picking up as much training, as much learning as I can. We have completely disregarded the value yeah. of the talk that goes around goes on around the water cooler because yeah. you think about after we talk about the weather and after we talk about our favorite college football team mm -hmm. or whatever it's like what deal are you working on right and you mm -hmm. learn through osmosis that's true can you imagine you're at an inter interview and uh they say oh you're gonna love our people and you're gonna learn so much from my people uh oh but you're never going to meet them you're not going to be around them i don't know that's kind of interesting well, uh, Brian, let me get your take on this. Obviously, there's a lot of loan maturities uh, coming up uh, that some of them have been kind of extended from from past uh, the last year or so. Uh, how's, how are the banks going to deal with that? How are we going to deal with that in the industry? Yeah, it's a big number, two, mm -hmm. two trillion plus uh, mm -hmm. over the next couple of years. Um, so, yes, it's a it's a huge number. I think, you know, there are some challenges. One, we've kind of talked about the inaccurate appraisals. Mm -hmm. How do you kind of fully understand if you are a lender or a borrower, what kind of decision you're going to make if you don't quite understand the value and the associated uh, valuation drivers mm -hmm. of the underlying property? You know, real, real question there. I think the way that institutions are handling it right now is they're in essence saying, hey, uh, if you're in good standing, we're going to work with you. We would love to get, you know, some kind of additional cash, some kind of collateral, because, you know, we're uncertain about the valuation dynamics. And let me give you a little bit of context. So you think back to, to you know, the time you were referencing, you know, the GFC, prior to the GFC, you know, on that front, there were, you know, a significant amount of loans with higher LTVs. 
And from that standpoint, we went into a time where value declined and those LTVs went, you know, way above 100%. I think banks have had that in the rearview mirror this time. And they've said, hey, we're not going to get ahead of our skis. And so the, in general, the LTVs that I've seen range from kind of the high 50s to maybe the mid 60s for the regulated institutions for the banks. So now with this change in cap rates, with the change in value, you have to add 100 or 200 basis points to cap rates and your LTV is a whole lot different than what it was at origination, whether it's in the high 70s or even mid 80s, depending on the change in cap rates. Now institutions are saying, gosh, we don't like the risk profile that that, that, that exudes. And so we need to bring that down. So we're gonna get some cash, some more collateral. In essence, we're going to try to bring that risk profile back down to something that we think is acceptable. And so I think from that standpoint, there is, you know, work going on, you know, uh, this industry has worked on the cash out refi and now it's the cash in refi. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I think from that standpoint, we are seeing, you know, more lenders ask those questions. Now for the folks who are, you know, not current on their loans, different story. And from that standpoint, I do think that we are seeing more foreclosures mm -hmm. because of that. Uh, dynamic. We've seen more note sales from that standpoint, trying to shift that risk of commercial real estate operations, which, uh, you know, to the, to the private sector, to, to, to private equity, et cetera, who may be a little bit uh, uh, more nimble um, and adept at handling commercial real estate than the average lender. Do we have enough sources you know, with the agency loans, with with HUD, with you know Fannie and Freddie, and then with uh, banks, and then with private lenders, uh, is it a little bit different market than it was, say, fifteen years ago? It, well, it is, and what's and what's interesting right now is that because there is a smaller set of loans on the market, mm -hmm. there's a lot of competition mm -hmm. for that for that small subset. Mm -hmm. Now, I think when you have the you know that two trillion or so that I referenced when that uh, when the decision when the market decides we're going to start extending this refining it a longer from that standpoint I think you know some of that competition will back off mm -hmm. but I think that the the underlying question is do we have the capital to refi that wall and I think in my view right now the answer is yes you know the the banks have had really good times. All of us had, you know, for a decade, right? Um, are the banks geared up enough with their special assets folks and workout folks, or is that something they're, they're kind of still building up? Because uh, it seems like those people are there, then they go away and do something else, right? And they've got to restock. <laughs> I, I mean, as you talked about, the good times yeah. don't, you know, don't bode well for, you know, the special assets folks. Right. Um, so we have seen lenders really slim those areas down. Mm -hmm. And then in the last couple of years, we mm -hmm. have seen, mm -hmm. you know, an uptick, uh, not only with lenders, but uh, private equity sources as well. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I think, you know, special assets groups certainly have grown as there was the thought that more issues would materialize, which they have begun to materialize. Mm -hmm. Now, I guess in the most recent Fed meeting, um, they did not adjust rates, uh, but I guess there was some indication that uh, they made uh, lower rates a little bit uh, what, in September. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> well, and so, you know, it, it would be inappropriate for yeah. me to comment on, you know, future monetary policy. Yeah. I think that, you know, Chair Powell has talked about, you know, working to get a higher level of comfort mm -hmm. that inflation was headed in the direction of our 2% mm -hmm. goal. Mm -hmm. My boss, Raphael Bostic the president CEO of the Atlanta Fed has articulated some of the same dynamics. Mm -hmm. So on, on that front, I think coming out of the FOMC, you know, to reference Chair Powell, they are getting more comfortable 
with 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 those thoughts mm -hmm. but again it would it would be inappropriate for me to yeah. comment about monetary policy yeah well yeah almost no one knows anyway <laughs> it's like we got to see what happens right uh but it does seem to make uh, the market feel the real commercial real estate market at least uh, seems to feel a little more comfortable that rates aren't rising anymore so maybe you can trust your underwriting a little bit it's kind of hard when rates were rising to get to underwrite things because the, the world's changing. You don't know how far it's changing. So that's good news. Ryan, what uh, advice would you give uh, just basic advice to a borrower who maybe finds a maturity and uh, coming up? And, yeah. And, and one thing, if I can just follow up sure. on that, you know, we're very data driven mm -hmm. as far as decision making. We're looking at lots and lots of data yeah. and there still is future data to come. So mm -hmm. I, I think it, it, you know, your comment about, nobody knows. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's still a lot of future data that will impact the decision, the thought, the thought process of our, of our policymakers. Right. And I think it's you know important to factor in as much data from a real time perspective mm -hmm. on, on that front. On the, on the question of, you know, giving advice to policy uh, uh, to, to your borrowers yeah. uh you know you, i'm gonna get in trouble uh you Pay know your there's <laughs> not <laughs> your loans well there's nothing like a regulator being asked to give advice uh you know I, I may i may put up a bunch of red flags there but i think you know right now in a time of more volatility mm -hmm. in a time where we know that the industry is struggling with value understanding the accuracy of value mm -hmm. in a time where lenders are part of that equation you know not only brokers and appraisers and lenders mm -hmm. are all having trouble with with understanding exactly what what value is mm -hmm. in a time where we have more maturities coming i think it's better to engage earlier with your lender yeah. from that standpoint pick up the phone send the email hey i've got a loan that's going to mature in 18 months mm -hmm. or two years. And I want to just start having that conversation about what are the what are the requirements? Because if the lender, if the lender is says, I need some more equity in the deal mm -hmm. or I need some more collateral, you want time to plan. Yeah. And so on that front, I think that's you know a very good conversation to engage mm -hmm. with the lender early on. Yeah, that's a good point. And um, and we deal with a lot of banks and give banks and borrowers uh, tips all the time. And, and I see the same thing. It's like, all right, if you're a borrower, get out there ahead of it, uh, be honest, share your information. Um, and, and don't, uh, I, also I've seen if you, you know, you always want to get legal counsel, right? But if you have that legal counsel in the face of the lender, sometimes then they just, they quit working with you. So, uh, try not to, I guess, lawyer up if you will. Uh, cause I've not, I've seen that I've seen bankers lenders kind of go, all right, well, if this is a fight, then we'll fight. But if we're working together, then let's work this together. And I think, and I give the same advice to, to lenders. It's like, look, let's work together on this. If your borrowers participating and, and handling the property well, then we can get through this, right? And we can get through this as whole as possible. But what about uh, tips for, for banks, for, for, for lenders to either on, with, with their new finance, if you want to go there, or with uh, uh, maturities that, that may be upside down? Well, I, I think, you know, bigger issue right now mm -hmm. is in this volatile day or age or whatever you want to, you know, period that you want to say, I think lenders have to evolve their risk management practices mm -hmm. to kind of, you know, some of the dynamics that we're seeing real time. Let's talk about insurance. Mm -hmm. Insurance is on everybody's mind that I talk to right now. Yeah. And whether it's the homeowner that had a 25% increase in their premium or to the poor folks who were hit by Hurricane, Hurricane Ian uh, in uh, Fort Myers, mm -hmm. you know, and their pre and their poor uh, and their premiums are up three hundred percent. I mean, that's that's really hard to kind of budget and stress test mm -hmm. items that you know maybe twenty five percent and maybe three hundred percent somewhere in between. <laughs> or, you know, I mean, that's that's a that's a real challenge. And that so is. I think from that standpoint, if I'm if I'm a lender, I think that you know you from a stress testing perspective you know, you're going to have to spend 
more time looking at some of those individual line items. Because if you've got a 300% increase in your insurance premiums that you didn't anticipate, that probably translates to a 3 to 5% decline in NOI, which you know impacts value. Yeah. And so on that front, I think you know more focus on risk management practices. They've got to evolve to meet some of the current dynamics in today's climate. Yeah. And it sounds like from your earlier conversations, uh, read those appraisals very carefully and really analyze them. Uh, you bet. Absolutely. Read every word. That's, that's, <laughs> the, that's the official, you know, I shouldn't say the official stance, but, yeah. you know, from a, from a you know, regulator's perspective, uh, you know, a couple words can change, uh, can change the meaning. And so in, in all seriousness, I do mm -hmm. think that uh, you have to read, uh, you know, well into the appraisal to make sure that you understand the connotations and context mm -hmm. of what the appraiser is doing. Yeah. I, there's a lot of challenges, as I talked about. Uh, you know, one of the one of the things I saw recently is an appraiser said the highest and best use of this Class C office building mm -hmm. is to raise it. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's tough. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And we've seen appraisals really high and, and really low sometimes, but it seems like we've seen them for the ones done for banks uh, a little high and, and to their defense, you know, they're looking at the past, right? And it's, and it's hard to look at the, the present or the time ahead of us if we don't know how to underwrite it. Um, well, what would be your final thoughts for our audience, uh, Brian, looking forward to, to the economy and, and commercial real estate would you leave right. us with? Right. I, I think, you know, as as you pointed out, mm -hmm. there there is more volatility mm -hmm. today than what we've seen in the past months. Mm -hmm. From that standpoint, I think that it's a positive. I mean, we've seen it bring long term rates down further, mm -hmm. and that is helpful to a capital intensive industry like commercial real estate. At the same point, I think that there will be a little bit of well, we know that there's slowing going on. And from that standpoint, greater uncertainty may cause some uh, some decisions as far as leasing, et cetera, to take another step. People may take another look at that. They may not be made quite as rapidly as they were. And that may slow absorption. So mm -hmm. on that front, there's certainly a plus as far as long-term rates appear to be coming down. That's a positive for cap rates. It's a positive for the cost of debt. On the other side of the equation, we may see a little bit more slowing go on in in the rate of leasing. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's good advice. Uh, you know, we've seen with the rates coming down a little bit that it's, there's you know more excitement and people feeling more comfortable with their underwriting. And I think a lot of buyers out there, investors and users, kind of looking at the lower bases they can get into properties right now. I heard a saying the other day, and this is not mine, but it was uh, uh, date the rate marry the deal, right? <laughs> Think about when you're acquiring real estate, well, if you can buy low, sell high, forget interest rates, but if the basis is lower and if real estate's a long-term hold, this might be a great time to look and, and buy. And I think we're seeing seeing a lot of that. We're seeing uh, activity pick up. And of course, if, if buyers and lenders can not feel more comfortable with their underwriting, um, then more sellers can go on the market and, and we start to turn this thing around. So, um, and my last tip for, for buyers, investors is if you run a business that uses office space, you should be looking to see if you can buy because we're just seeing some incredible buys for users to buy you know, buildings and, and get in at such lower bases. You may have some huge windfall profits down the road. And then my advice for lenders is I think this is a great time to do loans. I think you have less competition, you have lower loan to value, you probably have more debt coverage ratio, um, and you have, uh, you hopefully don't have uh, uh, rate risk at the maturity, hopefully. Uh, and then you also can build some great relationships. I know in the last recession, I, I had a bank give me a, a loan when it didn't make any check any boxes. They said, it's Michael, we, we know you're good for it. And, 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 and it didn't check any boxes on, and it was on an office building that I own. And I'm like, all right. So from then on, I'm like, I love you guys. You know, it's just, you can really build some good relationships, right? Mm -hmm. right. Uh, so it can be a good time for buyers, for sellers, uh, and obviously for, for users, for tenants, they get some good deals. Well, if it's in office, I think retail, industrial, those are still 
yeah, there, there's no, no real bargains there. I mean, as we know, you mm-hmm. know, along with any business, I mean, there's a lot of emphasis and influence of the relationship. Yeah. So from, from that standpoint, yes, I do think the relationship is important. Mm-hmm. Um, at the same point, you know, you have to mind your, you know, kind of the risk management practices if you're a lender. Yeah. Make sure that that's because certainly people like me are going to say, how are your risk management practices yeah. going? Yeah. You know, what's going on? And yeah. so from that standpoint, I think, it, it, you know, the relationship is important at the same point. You know, you, you want to be uh, the whole team. You know, you want the relationship. You also want to make sure that the risk management practices from the health of the bank's perspective uh, are yeah. safe and sound. Yeah. Well, I, my hats off to 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 you guys and, and to banks because I'm seeing now when I'm dealing with foreclosures with banks, they know a lot more about the property than they did in the last downturn. And the last downturn is like that. We're foreclosing this property and we have nothing and know nothing. I'm like, what, really? But now they, they, they have more and the folks know more about commercial real estate, which they really should if they're lending on it, right? Yes, so, abso- ab- absolutely. Yeah. If you're yeah. lending on it mm-hmm. and the regulators have talked, mm-hmm. you know, significantly about, you know, know your borrower, know the property, know the market, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of questions, a lot of conversation, pardon me, around, you know, competencies. You yeah. know, do you have geographic competency, et cetera? Mm-hmm. And from that standpoint, I think that has put the industry on better footing yeah. to weather, you know, some of this volatility that we're seeing. So. All right. Well, final question. Glass half full or half, half empty right now? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a regulator. There's nothing in the glass. No. <laughs> Ryan, good to see you. Good thanks for being you. on the show. Yep. All right. And thanks for joining us around the country. Hey, please let us know what you think. Hey, if you appreciate the show, we'd appreciate you sharing it. So thank you. And until next week, be sure that you always lead, learn, and laugh and join us for America's Commercial Real Estate Show. America's Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you by CCIM C5 Summit will be at the Hard Rock Hotel in Hollywood, Florida, September 17th to 19th. Visit c5summit.realestate. By ShareFile, designed with real estate and other highly regulated industries in mind, ShareFile offers secure digital solution to simplify workflow and improve collaboration. Visit sharefile.com. By CREI Summit, This will be in Atlanta, Georgia, September 11th to the 13th, uh, right here in Atlanta, Georgia, where we're headquartered. Visit CREsummit.com. By Bull Realty, commercial real estate sales, leasing, and advisory services. Visit bullrealty.com or reach out to me directly. My email is michael at bullrealty.com. By Commercial Agent Success Strategies, 21 cloud accessed agent training videos, Learn more at commercialagentsuccess.com. You're invited to subscribe to the show wherever you listen or watch the show. You're also invited to subscribe to a weekly email announcing the show topic and guests at CREshow.com. Thank you for watching, listening, and sharing America's commercial real estate show.